Hi, welcome to our cost accounting today. Uh, I want to focus on standard costing and variances today. This particular uh, topic is relevant for those who are doing FMA for ACCA and those who are doing D5 for Zika. So let's look at our forecast for today. Uh, after the session is done, you must be able to explain the purpose and principles of standard costing, explain the differences between standard costing, marginal costing, and absorption costing, also be able to establish the standard, the standard cost per unit and uh, absorption and marginal costing. What else are we looking at today? We are also looking at the calculation of variances. So after the session is done, you must be able to calculate different types of variances, interpret the variances, and also look at the possible causes of variances and recommend control actions. You must be able to explain factors to consider before investigating variances. So let's start. What is a standard cost? A standard cost is a carefully predetermined unit cost that is calculated in advance of production taking place. As such, it includes the standard amounts of labor at standard cost, standard amounts of materials at standard cost, together with the budgeted overheads, uh, overheads absorbed at the predetermined rate using the budgeted levels and activity levels. Overhead uh, absorption rate is calculated by dividing activity level into budgeted costs. Standard costing is often used to establish expected cost against which actual costs can be compared. That is, a standard cost can be used to establish control over cost. The differences between standard and actual cost are what we are calling variances. The process of analyzing these differences between actual and standard costs is known as variance analysis and that's what we are looking at today types of uh, standards we have four different types of standards number one ideal standard what is the ideal standard this is the perfect standard that is what should be achieved if there is no wastage or loss and the whole process is functioning perfectly well this type of standard can act as a long-term aspiration target Number two type of standard is attainable standard. These are standards in advance of what is currently being achieved. However, the degree of improve, uh, improvement required to attain the standard is a practical proposition. This form of standard can be very motivating for the staff. Current standard Current standard, this is the standard an organization is currently achieving. It does not provide aspiration for improvement, but it does provide a benchmark against which you can measure day-to-day -day activities. Basic or historical standard, this is a standard that was set some time ago and has not been updated. It allows the company to measure its progress by, of course, comparing uh, that what is being achieved uh, in present terms with the standard that has been set in the past. So let's look at uh, an exercise on standard costing, standard costing exercise. Now, we are told that uh, using information in the paragraph below produce a standard cost card for product X. So what we are trying to do for product X is just to establish how much it is costing the organization to make a unit of a product or how, how much is expected to be spent on making product X. So the information that we are provided with is uh, each X uses 2 kg of material material q at a standard cost of 30 uh, per kg six hours of labor at 10 per hour variable overheads are uh, have, have a standard cost of 15 per hour the company has fixed production overheads of 20,000 and is budgeting to produce 500 units 
a standard profit required is 100. Uh, is added to the cost to determine the standard price. So after we calculate the cost of making product X, who had a profit of $100 or pounds in order for us to establish the standard price. So let's just go to our worksheet. I will, I will copy this question so we can paste it on our worksheet and see how we can calculate or produce um, the standard cost card. Okay, so there we are. I always love working with tables, so let's see how we can use a table to help us. Let me just increase the font a bit so that we can be able to see clearly. So now we have uh, a number of items there. So let's create a table to work with. Uh, in this case, a three column table will do. Three column table. Maybe let's go to 10 rows. There is no problem in having a number of rows. So this is a uh, product X standard cost card. Product X standard cost card. So what we have in terms of price, this is a pound. Can we find a pound somewhere there? Let's use a dollar. I can't see the pound quickly there. So let's use a dollar. It's just a sign of the amounts of money. So let's start. Materials. Materials that are required. So what quantities of materials do we require? 2 kg of material X is required at a standard cost of 30 per kg. So material Q, we need 2 kg at the cost of 30 per kg. Is that 30? Yes, at the cost of 30 per kg. And that will give us uh, 60, 60 dollars. Uh, what else do we require for this material? We are told that uh, six hours of labor is required at 10 per hour. So in terms of uh, labor, we require six hours six hours and labor is paid at 10 per hour so that will give us uh, 60. what else what else is required here we are told that the variable overheads have a standard cost of 15 per hour and what are we given in the question we are given six hours available six hours available so uh, 15 by 6 that will be the variable overheads overhead costs so variable overheads you can be doing what I'm doing so that you can have a feel of what is happening this is variable overheads we have six hours to be used and the variable overheads is uh, the cost per hour is uh, we are told that 15 cost per hour is 15 so we should have uh, 90 so what else are we looking at we are told that uh, the company has a fixed production overhead of that intends to produce 500 now if you are using marginal costing you first of all establish the variable costs subtract from the price that will give you the contribution but we are using absorption costing so we are using the full costing method the units of a product are costed at full cost so we will include the fixed overheads uh, 
fixed overheads. How do we calculate the fixed overheads? Is um, uh, the budget fixed overheads per unit? It's the budgeted overheads divided by their budgeted activity level. So we have the twenty thousand as the budgeted costs, but fixed budgeted costs divided by five hundred units as the budgeted output level. So if you divide twenty thousand by five hundred you must get something like 40. So now we have the costs established. So what is our standard cost for this product? Our standard cost for the product will be the total of what we have listed. So this includes the variable costs plus the uh, proportion of the fixed cost that is absorbed to that particular unit of a product and that will give us 250. Now we are told in the question that we should have a profit, the standard profit is 100, so had profit of 100, we should have the standard price standard price of 350 after you had that you have the standard price of 350 that's the standard profit that should be added all right so we have just done the product x a standard cost card and we have added to the cost the profits the standard profits to us to to get the standard price so let's move on let's get back to our let's get back to our document so that's the exercise one now let's move on and uh, establish other things let's look at variances and variance analysis variances can be determined can be defined as the difference between the plan budgeted or standard cost and the actual so what's the variance is the difference between the budgeted and the actual or the difference between the standard cost and the actual or the difference between the planned and the actual the same comparison can be made also for revenues where you look at the budgeted revenue against the actual revenues analysis of the difference between standards and and actual costs is known as variance analysis so with variance analysis a variance can either be favorable or adverse so what we call a favorable variance a favorable vari variance occurs when actual results are better than the expected results which leads to having a higher profit than expected Adverse variance occurs when the actual results are worse than expected, producing a lower expected profit. So variance are calculated in total. Uh, they are also broken down into their constituent parts as shown below. So let's look at the possible variances that we can calculate. In relation to material, we calculate the material usage variance and the price variance in relation to labor we calculate the efficiency variance and labor rate variance in relation to variable overheads we calculate efficiency variances and the expenditure variances in relation to fixed overheads we calculate uh, expenditure variances and also we look at efficiency and capacity variances which of course is a breakdown of the volume variances and then under sales we calculate the volume uh, profit variances and the price variances as well in this particular video i want just to focus on the variable variances that is material labor and variable overheads in another video i will tackle the issues of fixed overheads and sales variances so you should look out for that particular video where i will do the fixed and the sales variance but for now let's focus our attention on material labor and variable overheads 
variances. Let's pick a question. So we have that massive question. Do not be scared of how big the question is. We will dismantle this question bit by bit. So let's see how we can work with this question. So I'll copy the question and transfer it on our worksheet. So let's just see, this is our worksheet. Let's uh, transfer that question there. Probably it will help us. Wow, so the question is a bit dismembered. Oh, let's do this. Let's just continue to work through that question. I'll be doing the calculations on the worksheet. Uh, you must be observing the question from the our original documents. So this is why we will bring our answers, but let's make references to the question. So what we have in the question is Owen, Owen Limited uses a standard costing system. Owen Limited uses a standard costing system. The standard cost for uh, the standard cost card for one product is shown below. So what we have here from that point, from that point to this point, these are standard costs. Then we have other information given here, which says the budgeted output and sales was 1,000 units. Actual output for the period was 1,300 and actual sales for the period was 1,250. And then we have actual results given down there. Direct materials actually used was 5,000 kg, costing that. Labor hours used was that, costing that. Variable overheads were that. Fixed overheads actual was that. Sales revenue, uh, 1,200 units were sold. See, plant to sold 1,250, 1,200 were sold, and that's a cost. So calculate all possible variances, all possible variances. So I've said I'll calculate the first three variances. That's the material, labor, and um, variable overhead variances. So let's start. So let's start. The first one we are dealing with is material variances. So under material variances, what are we looking at? We've been told that here we should be concerned with material usage variancy and the price variancy. So having that in mind, the next thing you need to do is to pick the information that is provided from the question in relation to material variances. The question has got a lot of things in it. So don't be concerned about all other figures. Just pick the figures relating to material variances, to material costs. So let's go back to the question and try to see if we can pick these figures. So number one, we have direct materials. You can write on the piece of paper, direct materials, that's 4 kg at 5 uh, pounds, dollars per kg, that equated to that. Where else do we have direct materials? We need to pick the actual output 1,300, the actual output 1,300, because materials will lead to the units of the products produced. So we need to establish how much material has gone there. Then the other thing is the direct material, uh, 5,000 kg costing that. So we have three items given or three figures given in relation to materials. The standard cost of materials uh, per kg. And then we are given actual output and then we are given the total cost of materials for the period in terms of actual costs. So pick those three things, bring them down to your uh, work page. So we have the standard uh, cost of materials, direct material cost. We are told direct material cost. This is um, so we had 4 kg per unit, 
4 kg per unit at $5 per unit. That's what gave us 20 the total cost per unit. Then we have um, uh, output, actual results, actual results. There was a production of 1,300 units. This is uh, units. What else are we given? Direct material cost. Direct material cost actual cost direct materials here 5000 kg was used this is as per question 500 kg was used and the cost of that was 22700 this is what we have picked from the question now here i want you to learn uh the key performer that you can use to calculate variances, material variances, and also you can use it for labor variances, and you can use it for variable overheads variances. So what is this key performer? So let's put it down there. It is SQ. SP. I will explain what that means. So let's go. Then we have uh, SQ is the standard quantity multiplied by the standard price. Then you have the actual quantity multiplied by the standard price. And then you have the actual quantity multiplied by the actual price so standard quantity multiplied by the standard price actual quantity multiplied by the standard price actual quantity multiplied by the actual price so what do you see here uh, between this and that sp standard price is the same standard price is the same Standard price, SP, standard price, SP. So what's the difference? What's different is the SQ, standard quantity, and actual quantity. So the difference between the standard quantity and actual quantity will give you the usage variancy. It will give you the usage variancy. So the difference the difference there will give you the usage variancy. So you will conclude that between that and that, we should have usage variancy, material usage variancy. Right. If you compare this and that, actual quantity, actual quantity is the same. So what's difference, different is the standard price and the actual price. So comparing the standard price to the actual price, the difference there should be your price variancy. That should be your price variancy. So between that and that, we have our price variancy. Okay, so let's calculate the figures. Uh, SQ, SP, standard quantity multiplied by standard price. So what was the standard quantity? Standard quantity of the actual output we are told that each unit takes 4 kg that's from the question so what will be the standard quantity of the actual output we are told that actual output was 1300 so that gives us what the standard quantity 
of the actual output. So actual output one three multiplied by the standard quantity per unit four. That gives us the standard quantity. Then that is multiplied by the standard price. So the standard price per kg of material, we were told this is uh, five dollars. So how much is that? If you get that in the calculator, you should have uh, twenty six thousand. Twenty six thousand. Let's get uh, actual quantity multiplied by standard price. Actual quantity multiplied by standard price. From the question, we are told that the actual materials used were 5,000 kg. So actual quantity used is 5,000 kg. 5,000 kg. This is multiplied by the standard price per kg SP which is 5 standard price that's 5 so how much would that be get that in the calculator it will be 25,000 25,000 and then lastly there actual quantity multiplied by actual price now we are told that the actual quantity that was used was that and the total cost was this. The total cost was 22700 So there the cost is already given, so just tap it in. So you should have, that is uh, 22700 22700 that's quite easy. Now I said the difference between this one, SQSP, and AQSP is going to be our usage variance because we are looking at the quantities. The difference between AQSP and AQAP because we are looking at the gap or the difference between standard price and actual price, this is going to be our price what? Variancy. So what is our usage variancy it is 26000 minus 25000 that is going to be 1000 that's how we calculated that's going to be 1000 is that favorable the number is a positive number so this is favorable what is the price variancy 25000 minus 22700 how much is the difference? You must get 2,300 as your difference there. 2,300. That's the difference. Is that favorable? It is a positive figure. So we conclude this is a favorable variancy. And so what is the total material variancy? The total material variancy will be 1,000 plus 2,300. So done. On the first part of variances we are done those are the variances we have calculated the usage variance and the price variance so what is key here is for you to remember the performer sq standard quantity multiplied by standard price then actual quantity multiplied by standard price actual quantity multiplied by actual price and then get the figures Let's go to the second one. Having done um, uh, the material variances, let's go back to the question and try to look at the other variances that we've talked about. Apart from material variancy, we also have labor variancy. Under labor variances, we are looking at calculating the efficiency and the labor rate variances so let's go what we need to do here is to pick all information relating to labor so in relation to labor you can pick a pen and just pick these values in relation to labor we have direct labor two hours at eight pounds per hour that gives us 16 so each unit gets two hours 
and the rate is eight pounds per hour. What else does it relate to labor? The actual output. The actual output we are told it's 1,300. This will directly be, is directly linked to the labor cost. And then we have direct labor. Actual hours were 2,850 and the actual cost, total cost of the 2,850 hours was 21.5. So pick those three pieces of information that you have been given in relation to labor so that we can go and begin to work with the labor variances. So let's come to our worksheet. Better to start a new page. So here we are dealing with the labor variances. And what variances are we concerned with? Efficiency and rate. So we are concerned with efficiency variances and the labor rate variances. Those are the two. So information picked from uh, the question. Information picked from the question. We have the standard labor per unit. Standard labor per unit. We are told each unit needs two hours. And the cost is the cost is eight that's what we were told in the question and that's what gave us of course uh, 16 which you can pick from the question what else do we have actual output actual output is 1300 units these are units what else did we pick from the question? It's the actual labor hours and cost. So actual labor hours and cost. We had um, 2850, 2850, these are hours and the cost was the cost was 21500 21500 so you see from that massive question each time you are calculating a particular variance you just keep just pick out the information that you require for you to work out your variances so i've picked out the information that is required for me to work out labor variances and what am i looking at in terms of labor variances i'm looking at efficiency and rate so let's see the adjustment to our initial performer. Now, in our initial performer, we add standard quantity multiplied by standard price. Now, you see, in terms of labor, we don't measure labor in terms of quantities. We measure labor in terms of hours. So instead of standard quantity, we will have standard hours. And in terms of labor charges, we don't call that price. We call it rate. So instead of having standard price, we'll have the standard rate. I hope you've gotten that. So back to our question. As part of the solution, big solution we are doing here. As part of the solution, you have standard hours standard hours and standard rate then the next one is actual hours and standard rate then lastly actual hours and actual rate so that's our key performer that's our key performer let's go back to our previous Performer, I want to show you that this performer we used here is exactly the same as the one we are going to use. So we had standard quantity. For labor, we call it standard hours. 
standard price for labor we call it standard rate so it's the standard hours multiplied by the standard rate actual hours multiplied by the standard rate and actual hours multiplied by the actual rate same so let's see what we can do with these figures so what are we going to call the difference between these values for example we've seen that uh, standard rate standard rate is the same so here we are measuring the gap or the difference between standard hours and actual hours that will result in an efficiency variancy so that variance will call it efficiency efficiency variancy so let's see for the other one you notice that actual hours actual hours the same what's the difference is the standard rate and the actual rate so what type of variance are we measuring at that point that difference there that difference there is the labor rate variancy labor rate variancy it's very easy to pick up these things the difference between that and that SR SR is the same so it's the standard hours actual hours that we are measuring there so let's calculate having said that what's the standard hours standard hours we are told that each unit that's the that same information we picked from the question each unit takes two hours to make and 1300 units were made at that rate so what's the standard hours multiplied by the standard rate so standard hours is two hours multiplied by the actual output remember this is the standard hours of actual output standard hours of actual output so there we have two hours per unit two hours per unit that is multiplied by 1300 units produced units produced okay so that's the standard hours now that multiplied by the standard rate of uh, 8 per unit. How much are we going to have? Get that in your calculator. You should have 20,800. 20,800. So easy. Actual hours multiplied by the standard rate very easy we are taught from the question that the actual hours were 2850 so actual hours 2850 that is multiplied by the actual sorry that's multiplied by the rate standard rate not the actual rate but standard rate which we picked from the standard information given that was eight so how much is that? That will be 22,800. I think so, 22,800. And finally, this is always given. It's there. Actual hours, because we already know this, actual hours multiplied by actual rate. So actual hours where that multiplied by the actual rate the total cost was 21500 so you just bring that figure down 21000 21500 okay so the difference between that and that gives us our efficiency variancy so how much is that 20800 multiplied by 22800 the difference is 2000 the difference is 2000 is that 2000 favorable or adverse think about it favorable or adverse that 2000 is a negative figure 
because you are subtracting 22,800 from 20,800. So that should be an adverse variance. Adverse. The difference between that and that is the labor rate variance. So how much is that? 22,800 minus 21,500. The difference should be 1,300. But that sounds like favorable because it's a positive figure. Favorable variance. So we are done with the labor variances. Let's move on to the last part. Variable overheads variances. That's the last part I'm dealing with in today's video. You have to look out for the next video where I'll do the other ones, the other types of variances. So let's see. Better to work it out on the next page. So we are dealing with the variable variable overheads variances. Back to the question. Let's just see what we have in the question. Variable overheads variances, the two variances we calculate there are expenditure variances, variancy and efficiency variancy. So how does this fit in? First and foremost, pick out all information relating to the variable overheads. So let's go. We have the variable overheads, that's two hours per unit, standard variable overheads, two hours per unit at the rate of 3.5 pounds, and that's what gave us seven. What other thing do we need to pick? Actual output, 1,300. What else do we need to pick? Actual variable overheads. So actual variable overheads, we have the variable overheads given there, that one there, and that is 7,800. So let's go back to our worksheet. Just pick out these values and then we work them out on our worksheet. So what have we picked from the question? It's the standard variable overheads. Standard variable overheads and we are told that was two hours per unit at the rate of 3.5 this information we got from the question direct and that gave us seven what else do we, did we get from the question is the actual output so actual output was 1300 units produced that is coming from the question then we have actual variable overheads our actual actual variable overheads they are given in the question as 7800 so having that done, this is our solution. Okay, so having done that, let's go back to the performer. So how does our performer look like now? We are still dealing with hours and rates, but this rate is more of the overhead absorption rate that is calculated. So it's different from the hourly rate or the rate per hour. This is the overhead absorption rate per unit. All right, so we're still dealing with the same performer. So how the performer look like if we have hours and rate? It is the standard hours multiplied by the standard rate. Then we have actual hours multiplied by the standard rate. And then we have actual hours multiplied by actual rate.
So what does this mean to us? It means that the difference between those two, the difference there is on this other side. Standard rate, standard rate, the same. Standard hours, actual hours. That difference should give us an efficiency variance. That's what we said. Efficiency variance. And the difference for the second one, the second set, actual hours, actual hours, standard rate, and the actual rate. That's where the difference is. And that should give us the expenditure variancy. That should give us the expenditure variancy. The expenditure variancy. So we have those variances. Let's calculate the figures. Uh, standard hours, we had two hours per unit. Two hours per unit multiplied by the number of units. So that is two hours per unit multiplied by the number of units produced 1,300. That's the standard hours. But that should be multiplied by the standard rate. What is the standard rate? 3.5. 3.5. If you get that in your calculator, you should have 9,100. 9, Actual hours multiplied by the standard rate. What is the number of actual hours given? Actual hours, we have uh, actual hours given in the question. If you go back to the question, it's 2,800. And 50. We had used that for our labor. 2,850. So we have 2,850 multiplied by the rate. The rate this time around is 3.5. That's the rate. So tap that in your calculator. How much do we have? We have 9,975. 9975. Finally, this is given. Actual hours by actual rate should give us a 7800. You just pick it the way it is. If you have noticed, we are just picking those values from the question. 7800. Pick it from there. So what's the difference between 9,100 and 9,975? The difference should be 875. 875. Is that adverse or favorable? It's a negative value, so it's an adverse variancy. Efficiency variancy, adverse. Expenditure variancy, 9,975 minus 78. How much do we have? 2,175. 2,175. That also looks like an, a negative? No, it's a positive value. It's 9,975 minus 78. It's a positive value. So that is a favorable variancy. Wow. So that's how we calculate variances. We have looked at how we calculate material variances, labor variances, and variable overheads variances. In the next video, I will talk about the fixed overhead variances and the sales variances, and then we'll wind up by looking at uh, possible reasons for these variances. Possible reasons for the variances. Otherwise, thank you so much for uh, spending your time to listen to this video plus many other videos that we are posting on the YouTube.
please if this video has helped you give it a thumb up if you have got questions relating to this particular topic write in the commentary uh, spaces there and i'll be able to respond to your question that way we are going to have a meaningful interaction i want to hear your questions as well thank you